Oh hi, glad you could make it. Just a quick note before we get going, since I forgot to mention any of this in the actual video. This is a bit of a shorter Let's Play than usual. It's a supplemental Let's Play to go along with 9 Gear Crow's LP of Ace Combat 04 Shattered Skies, or Distant Thunder if you're in the PAL territories. Crow has been doing a series of Let's Plays following the Ace Combat games that take place in Namco's Strange Real Universe. It's sort of like if you took a Gundam anime, but you put all of it in planes instead of mechs. It's a lot of fun, and Crow has been doing a really excellent job of being comprehensive with lots of write-ups about all of the characters and the story and the world that Namco and Project Aces have built. And there's lots of cool information about planes along the way. If you're interested in knowing more about the Strange Reel canon or Ace Combat in general, I thoroughly recommend checking out any of Crow's LPs of the games so far. Links will be in the description below. As for Ace Combat 3, it's sort of the black sheep of the entire franchise. The original version in Japan was technically set in the Strange Reel universe, right at the very end of the known timeline, and it was a huge departure from the previous two arcade-style games that they had gone with. It was very story-heavy, it had lots of characters and factions that you would choose to fight for or against, branching pathways and uh, multiple endings, and a really cool twist at the very end that still makes it like my favorite story of all of the Ace Combat games to date. But it wasn't that well received when it was originally released in Japan, and so Namco decided to not spend money localizing the voice acting, which in turn meant that all of the story and all of the characters got completely cut from the international release. So the international release ends up basically just being like a better version of Ace Combat 2. But when I say it's a better version of Ace Combat 2, it really is just a super, super good game from a gameplay perspective. It's got really well-designed levels, it controls really well, everything about it as far as playing the game just feels great. And if you have no frame reference for all of the localization issues, then it holds up perfectly fine as a game. And so that's why I'm doing a Let's Play of this version, because this is the version that I played when I was a kid and loved to death. If you're interested in seeing the Japanese version of the game, and you really should be, because it's absolutely worth seeing, if only to see just how much of a risk they took going from 2 to 3. Lunathex also did a Let's Play of it for one of Crow's previous Ace Combat threads. Link will also be in the description. It's cool to compare and contrast the two, I think, and see just how radically different a game can wind up being once it crosses the border from one country to another. At least back in the 90s. But anyway, that's all from me for this little foreword. And now I'll let the me of a couple of weeks ago take you on a magical trip through the skies. Take it away, and remember, gotta stay fly. So, Nine Gear Crow, what would you say is like one of the most defining aspects of Ace Combat? Well, I would say probably definitely the uh, soundtrack and ultimately the uh, atmosphere that uh, you get from all the wonderful radio chatter and character building stuff that happens in game. Yeah, I'd say the same thing. It's like it's a colorful cast of like wild characters interacting with each other. Mm. That's that's pretty much Ace Combat in a nutshell. Also, you fly some planes. Um, what would you say if we had an Ace Combat game with almost none of that at all? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Like, like, what if we had an Ace Combat game with one of the things, one of the most core aspects of Ace Combat completely stripped out? What the fuck? Ah, uh, we're not done with the PlayStation just yet. We've got to go through the best Ace Combat game. Oh, yeah. oh, sure. This was before, either before uh, Project Aces even existed, or before Namco would let them be known as Project Aces.
I like this loading screen better than the other one. <laughs> yeah, like, I think really the first game that... Oh, please pick German, please pick German, please... Fuck. Sorry. Yeah, I think the first Project Aces game that actually published under Project Aces was 5. Oh, I can't get over to just how fucked up they ruined that intro compared to the Japanese version. It's like 100% uh, representative of what this game is going to be like. All of those red uh, icons there meant that I've gotten A ranks on all three difficulties. That was at least, no, over a decade ago though. <laughs> Jeez. So unlike the unlike the Japanese version, we don't have any uh, lore text we can look at. Instead, we have this record screen, and because I have clear data on my memory card here, it's a bit confused. We can... Uh, I didn't realize this because I didn't hit down enough when I was looking at the uh, key bindings, but you can actually change all of the key bindings, which... Uh, uh, is impressive to me. I, it's not the sort of thing I typically am familiar with in PlayStation 1 games, but there's no reason to actually change the uh, key bindings at all. They It controls exactly as you expect all modern Ace combats to. So we're going to jump in to our very first mission, Transport. It's not that we're transporting something, it's that we have to destroy a transportation unit. It's exactly as you expect, like a your opening ace combat mission. They're just uh, not bummers. Yeah, I was gonna say that's pretty much close to uh, your standard ace combat opening mission, except we're committing more crimes right off the bat rather than defending an area. Oh yeah, it's great. You'll see this as the game goes along. Uh, we only have access, unlike the Japanese version, we can only pick the Eurofighter 2000, and so that's why we're going to be picking the Eurofighter. We get the machine gun choice and missile choices, and off we go! <laughs> like, I will admit though, like, for all the shit that we've sort of, like, given Electrosphere over the course of the various LPs and, like, Loon's LP of the Japanese version, I really do like the user interface screen they went with. I think, I think it's... It's nice and clean and, and is a lot more, uh, it does a better job than the Ace Combat 2 uh, interface. Mm. So anyone who's watched the Japanese Let's Play will <clears throat> notice that something is curiously absent and that we get basically no uh, callouts from the computer when we get hits on the enemy. Which sucks. I didn't realize that the computer in the Japanese version like actually says bullseye and bingo when you shoot enemies down. Cause you just get like a weird electronic duck honk when you kill enemies in this. <laughs> oh god, yeah. It's like fucking semi just honking its horn just like three miles down the road. Yeah. Oh, that, that sucks. Cause like, that was like one of the most pointlessly rewarding and validating parts of Ace Combat 2 was Bullseye! Bagged one! You got him! Like, their weird, like, uh, deep southern United States localization team for some reason. Yeah, lots of things, lots of things got lost, but still, in spite of losing some of that, and even if I had played Ace Combat 2 and found out that it was, oh, you went from voice acting to no voice acting, 
I would still say this is my favorite Ace Combat, and we'll get to that uh, as we go through this LP. <laughs> All of these uh, escort planes are really easy to shoot down. They have basically no mobility. So even though I'm coming back to Ace Combat for the first time in years and years and years, and I'm an idiot and don't know how to shoot down planes, I can still manage to hit them with enough missiles. <laughs> And since the Eurofighter has a modest <coughs> payload of 70 missiles to start off with, uh, I think I'll just manage to squeeze through. <laughs> and when I say modest, like, I'm not kidding, that's... It's the lowest amount number of missiles we can get in the game. Wow. <clears throat> like, that's almost, like, comically low for an Ace Combat uh, game in terms of, like, missile counts. Yeah. So while we go track down our last target, if we were to take longer than 3 minutes and 35 seconds, as the uh, mission briefing showed, the mission just ends. It says mission over, and when we go to the, uh, to the uh, debriefing screen, it gives us a D rank. It'll give you either a C or a D if you fail to meet the uh, operational window. If we wow. do manage to uh, get all of our objectives done within the time limit, most of the time we'll get a mission update. Sometimes the it's actually benef the mission ends earlier if you get all of the uh, targets down in that time. But generally, it's an extra. You get something else to shoot down. So because we got those transport planes just in the nick of time, some reinforcements are going to show up, so we get to kill all of them as well. Ooh. Yeah, like, so, this sort of mission setup is sort of like the inverse of what they ultimately do in Ace Combat 04, where, like, uh, you are given, like, a set amount of time to, like, accomplish, like, uh, or score a certain number of points, but, like, the time they give you is usually very generous, like, almost, like, 10 or 15 minutes at a time, and... Instead of, like, uh, the mission ending once you clear that point amount, like, it sort of does, like, in a couple missions in Ace Combat Zero, like, really what you ultimately wind up doing in 04 is just running down the clock. Yeah, and I think the most amount of time that you spend in a mission, the most amount of time I've spent in a mission that one, when I've been recording, I think was about 12 minutes, and that's when, on some of the really long ones where you just want to kill everything, because you need to kill everything to get a high enough rank. And in these first few missions, I didn't realize foolishly that people over the years have obviously figured out exactly what the requirements are to get A ranks. So I thought, if I just kill everything really quickly, then I'm sure to get the A rank. I think you only need to kill like one extra plane after killing all of the planes in the first phase of the mission to get the A rank, but I figure I might as well like kill everyone. Just leave no witnesses. <laughs> yeah, except for the entire city down below that watch you do all this horrible stuff. Expo City's got its own shit to deal with. I'm sure they'll be fine. And yes, this uh... For anyone not familiar, this is still taking place in uh, Yuzia. And entirely in Yuzia, like, there are some points just off the shores, but Ozia is nowhere to be seen, and I really hope that that means that in Ace Combat 7, Ozia fucking burns. Like, they crash and burn and get just completely written out of relevant history. Oh, you know they'll never do that. Like, Project Aces has such a hard-on for Ozia. Because it, it is not America, let us not forget. I'm still not, I'm not entirely convinced though, because... Just because, just because, like, you would think that they would bring it up at some point in this game. Unless it was just so early in the canon that they didn't bother. Uh, like, they, had, they hadn't thought of it yet. I'm probably going to go with they hadn't thought of it yet, because, like... I'm, you'll, you'll see it in, like, the... Uh, the opening post for 04, but, like, uh, they didn't really crack Strange Reel as, like, a world until, like, Shattered Skies. Yeah, because it was the uh, announcement for Shattered Skies that mentioned a Strange Reel world, didn't it? Yeah, but uh, also, like, one of the things I'm going to be showing off is uh, 
basically like the prototype map for Strange Real, and you can see like, you know, there's Osea, there's Euctabania, there's something that sort of looks like Anya at the top of the map, like. Hmm. Oh uh, yeah, the good old low effort to just line on the map with X's and beeps from Ace Combat 2. I do wish I could... Uh, maybe someone has modded Ace Combat 3 to have... Just the only difference is that there's those explosions. <laughs> yeah, that, that was always the most satisfying part, but... Yeah, like we were talking about Uzia there, and you can see the map just in sort of rough hexagonal form there on the the top menu. Yeah, and speaking of, uh, one of the things I actually I really like about Ace Combat 3, and it's in both versions of the game, uh, compared to more modern Ace Combats, is that the missions just go all over the place. We were in Expo City, which is like a coastal city, and now we're just in the middle of the Waiapolo Mountains. Mm -hmm. Wai no, Waiapolo Mountains. Yeah, we, we, we Apollo, yeah, but uh, like, yeah, like it's sort of debated over like what the capital of the FCU is but uh, most people have settled on like yeah it's probably Expo City and like that Expo that's City the... or Port Edwards maybe yeah like I use Expo City like in all the posts and everything and the lore stuff that I do for the thread but uh, yeah it could just as well be Port Edwards sure shit wasn't St. Ark it's not gonna be Mega Float <laughs> So now that we've unlocked literally anything that's not the Eurofighter forever, we're going to be using literally anything that's not the Eurofighter forever. Hooray! I also... When you look at other Ace Combat games, especially like Ace Combat 2, and you see, oh, the Eurofighter is a really good plane. It's like, it's a pretty decent plane in, uh, in 2. It's the worst of the worst in this, and the MiG is no, like, almost no better. It's just a little bit more uh, maneuverable. Oh. in this. We get so, so ridiculous with the planes in this game, and it's one of the things that draw, drew me to the series initially. <laughs> yeah, because, like, in any other game, like, this, like, it's the called the MiG-33 here, but it should be, like, the MiG-29, like, in real life. Like, this is a mid-game plane, and they're just giving it to you right at the start here, and it's a piece of crap, apparently. So I didn't. So I've been like burning through the uh, AC2 thread and LP, and I noticed uh, one of the missions. I think it was like mission 10 or so, or somewhere around there, when you have a mission in the Hatties Ravine uh, to destroy some like bases. And when I was watching it, I realized it's basically this mission. You have some like craterous mountains and bases sort of nestled in there where you have to mostly come at them from above to shoot them down. And as I and after I noticed that, I saw that a lot of the missions in Ace Combat 2, you see their sort of skeletal structure reappear in Ace Combat 3. Hmm. Yeah, no, it, and, it, it... I was gonna say, it would not surprise me in the slightest to know that, or to find out that they've, like, either just reused mission ideas or in some cases reused entire mission assets from Ace Combat 2, but given them a facelift. It's a good facelift at that. <laughs> Like, this is so night and day from Ace Combat 2. Oh, yeah, like, uh, I've just sort of been sitting here marveling at the fact that, you know, like, say what you will about Electrospear, and there's a fucking lot to say about it. Compared to Ace Combat 2, this game looks just like a work of art. Uh, draw distance, like, actual 3D models on things. You feel like any, you feel a sense of depth on anything. Mm. I, I didn't realize it. I couldn't put, like, put it into words for ages uh, while I've been watching through the videos. But Ace Combat 2 has basically no sense of depth or momentum. Like anytime you need to turn or like speed up or slow down, it feels like it just happens. Like, mm. whereas in this game, it feels like. Everything has a bit of weight to it, and there's like it's taking time for your, your afterburners to actually affect your velocity. Mm, yeah, well, and you also have to keep in mind what Loon said in uh, the Japanese version. They actually implemented a physics engine in this game. Like yeah. they tr they trashed it for Shattered Skies, but they tried to implement it.
Also, another thing I really, really like about Electrosphere is the soundtrack for it. Soundtrack is fucking awesome. Mm. There's like a second, so Ridiculous Planes drew me to the series. This soundtrack drew me to the series. The, the it's it's kind of unfortunate that like so much of what drew me to the series and what I love about Electrosphere is basically never seen again in this in Ace Combat. Like this soundtrack, you mostly get sort of like rock or uh, orchestral uh, scores for future games and the planes stayed mostly within the realm of realism until you get to like your one designated super super plane of the game in each uh, subsequent ace combat but in this one like they trade super weapons like and like massive air fortresses and airships and stuff they trade that for multiple super planes <laughs> and i'd like to imagine that that's just because by this point of the by this point of the timeline 2030 to 2040 like planes are just that good they don't need to have like an agion or a stonehenge they just say no we put all of that in this plane and it's cool <laughs> and again this is one of the things that i'm very interested to see what they go or what direction they go with in ace combat 7 because like you know, we are slowly creeping up to Electrosphere on the timeline, like the last canon game was Ace Combat X, and that's in 2020, so we're about 10 years away from Electrosphere at this point. Is there any mention in Ace Combat X of, like, Newcom and General Resource? Because I feel like it has to be, by that uh, point, they both exist and are, like, building their you know, dominance over the world. Not to my knowledge, but then again, like, I'm just gonna come straight out and say it, like, I haven't even, like, played uh, Ace Combat X beyond, like, the first couple of missions yet, so when I get to that one in the, the LP, it's basically gonna be more or less like what I did with Ace Combat 2, it's gonna be, like, a semi-blind LP of it, so... Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. But, yeah, no, no, not, not to my knowledge, at least, but I know there is, like, some kind of vaguely Electrosphere shit going on there, like, again, more giant laser towers and, like, crazy sci-fi cities, so who knows, really. We are going to destroy the lighthouse. Like, that's not even a question. <laughs> I don't know, it all depends on which nation we're gonna be, like, uh, because, like... I so want to be able to, like, choose factions <laughs> in that game. That'll just be, like... I, if it becomes like a modern day electrosphere, like just 10 years off, yeah, do that. Mm, because like, yeah, the uh, the promotional assets they released for it show like, okay, like the F-22 that was zipping around in that trailer was an Ocean plane and like the Su-35 that was whipping around was an Erosion plane. So people are going like, wait a minute, are we like getting like a strange real world war here or something? Like, you know, like the first actual world war. As it, as it were, that'll be <laughs> and that'll be really cool to see. So for mission three, in Japanese version, this is where you met Dijon. Uh, but because we don't have Dijon in this game, we get to do joint maneuvers with the Ace Fighter, whose name is apparently F15. But look at that, what a what an easy mission to finish this video off with. Nice and uh, simple, absolutely no targets to engage with whatsoever. And we're gonna take our new Hornet. See, the Hornet has less attack and power than the other planes, but that's fine, cause it's, uh, it doesn't matter. You can take a slightly heavier uh, machine gun, and you could take the ground missile, but I never do, cause I think it's useless. Or at least I did think it was useless while I was uh, recording the LP. So instead, I take the short range missile if I ever have the option. <laughs> and uh, don't ram up to his ass, please. <laughs> you, can, you can clip straight into him. Really? And, uh, yeah, um, Loon does it immediately in his, uh, in his recording. <laughs> it's actually also really hard to, like, keep... To stay close to this guy he really does his best to shake you and if you fall away uh, from the 1000 foot radius 
You can see just above my altitude there, for the first, last and only time in the game, we have a points uh, counter. That counts up while we are joining. <laughs> why, ever that, why they said that word, use that word, I don't know. But while we are joining, we gain points and we're gonna need to get a certain number of points to get the A rank in this mission. And he likes to just slow down and speed up at really, at like the same points every time, but they still come as a surprise to me. And when you're trying to catch up with just all of the turns and uh, spins he's doing, it's, and you suddenly realize, oh shit, I gotta like, really speed up or else he's leaving me behind. <laughs> Listen to this music! Yeah, the, the, this is a remix of Elemental Particle, actually, from uh, Ace Combat 2. Mm. Yeah, see, so he got away from me, because I'm trying to figure out where he even went. Yeah, and I can see the points counter already stopped there. So, like... How overcranked or undercranked is like his F-15 MTD or uh, whatnot compared to like where you should be at this point in the game? Compared to compared to this F-18, it's like stupidly good. Uh, the F-15 is roughly mid middle of the game. <laughs> wow, even in Electrosphere, huh? Yep, even in Electrosphere. Uh, now we're done done with the flight and we got uh, we got over 3200 points and combined with the points we're going to get for this target practice that'll net us the A rank which is good. Nice. Uh, Loon seems to have an issue with like shooting stuff with the machine gun in this game. I don't see it. <laughs> uh, I, I just kind of shoot things and it works. Hey, I have an issue with shooting stuff with a machine gun. Are you kidding me? Uh, no, mate, I... Maybe it's because I just hold the machine gun button and just move around until I figure, oh, it's probably hitting stuff. Okay. <laughs> so here's the deal with missiles. The short range missiles, I can fire four of them instead of the two that the uh, previous two planes had. But the ground missiles, I can only fire two of them. I figured that, like, oh, why ever use the ground missiles? Because then you can't engage air targets. Turns out, if you pick the ground missiles, you can also fire regular missiles if you're locked onto air targets. Huh. Well, there you go. So it does make ground missiles a viable option and, like, a a pretty good uh, variety in your loadout. <laughs> uh, who's that? Oh, it's a new comm plane. Newcom, don't you mean new work? Because for some reason they decided to change the name of the corporation for the PAL version? Or maybe it was just for the export version entirely. What? So yeah, Newcom enti is entirely new work in this. General <laughs> Resources stays the same, Ouroboros stays the same, new work, uh, Newcom is now new work. Fuck, I can't even get it straight in my head. God, the 90s were weird. So the reason I like to take the short range missiles or any any plane and missile uh, loadout that lets me fire at least four missiles at once is because it lets me fire four missiles at once and that's really good for someone who's an idiot and doesn't know how to properly dogfight <laughs> because you just get a lock on when and when they're not turning get a lock on fire all of the missiles at once and hope that like at least two of them hit yeah like that was bullshit, like, what just happened there. Like, that should have been a kill. Oh, yeah, you mean, like, me shooting him, or, like, me crashing into the plane? Uh, you shooting him. Yeah, no, the... Like, I I don't expect, like, mid-air collisions to happen in Ace Combat games, but, yeah, no, like, those two missile shots you should have... You shot at him should have been hits. Yeah, and the missiles can and will do some really fun stuff in this game, so I was actually annoyed that it didn't. <laughs> and if I had the Vulcan, I think I might have actually hit with enough uh, machine gun shots to destroy the destroy the R201, but that's fine. The there actually isn't any collision on regular enemy planes with your plane, same as the friendlies. The larger larger planes like airships and stuff, there will be collision on. 
but regular things you just fly straight through and it's awesome. Makes it way easier. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the uh, PS2 games have that too because I know like I've had some moments in like recording other uh, like stuff that didn't make it into the LP where I've just like clip clean through like friend and enemy planes alike. Yeah. Well, thank God. <laughs> So I left one guy alive because I didn't need to uh, kill him and I figure I should make that my calling card. I'll always leave one guy alive except for the instances when I don't leave anyone alive or the instances <laughs> when I leave more than one guy alive. But in that instance, it's my calling card. Well, of course, you need one guy left alive to run back to his friends and tell everyone about this horrible monster that you are. Oh, the horrible monster I am. It's an Ace Combat LP. We're all horrible monsters. We could be worse. <laughs>